Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning. So today we continue our lesson on digital electronics chapter 7 latches and flip flops. So before we continue with our lesson, let me explain about the differences between combinational and sequential logic. So in logic circuit, it has been divided into several categories based on the scale of the circuits, which is small scale, medium scale, large scale and also a very large scale so each scale is divided by the number of the logic gate inside the logic circuits so in every categories it has been divided into two types which are combinatorial and also sequential so these types is applied to all type of the logic circuit so, as we are learning about the medium scale integrated circuit inside this subject, so the combinatorial type of the MSI, we have the multiplexer, the decoder, and also the adder. And for sequential type MSI, which we will learn in this chapter, so it is related to the latch and also flip flop. So, what is actually the differences between the combinatorial and also the sequential circuit. So actually for a combinatorial circuit, it has no output feedback from the output. But for sequential circuit, we have a feedback from the output which is given back to the input. So this is an example of the logic circuit for half adder. So as you see here, for half adder, it has two inputs which are A and B and two outputs which are SUM and C out. And this logic circuit shows for active high input SR latch. So in this um, SR latch, it has actually a total of four inputs, R, S, and also inputs that comes from the output, which is Q, bar, and Q. So from this, circuits different architecture you can say that there is no output feedback come from the half adder so you can conclude that the half adder is the combinatorial circuit but for active high input SR latch there are output feedback that comes from the output goes towards the input of the logic gates so from this circuit you can say that the active high input SR latch is the sequential logic. Okay, so from this introduction, I will start with the latch. So at the end of this lesson, you are expected to know what is the function of latch and how to use the latch in the application of digital logic circuit. So let's continue. So first, we go through the introduction of latches. So what is latches? So latch is a type of temporary storage device that has two stable state, by stable. So in latch, we have two stable state, which are set or reset. And both states are stable. So for latches, it is a basic form of memory. For example, we wanted to, to store value of 0 and 1 in a latch. So actually, latch is a device which is used as a very basic form of memory because it can just store a value of 0 and 1 inside the logic circuit. So latches are similar to flip-flops because they are bistable devices. So it means that latches and flip-flop is a bistable devices that can reside in either of two states using a feedback arrangement. So both circuit has a feedback. So in which the outputs are connected back to the opposite inputs. So latches however are considered unstable in modern circuit and rarely used. So however latches suffers from the unstable condition which we will investigate in the later slide. So at which state does the latches has become unstable? So, we will learn in the next slide. 
So flip-flops are the dominant sequential circuit element and are present in almost all digital system. So basically, flip-flop is, is like a standard, it's like a basic circuit for the sequential logic circuit in the application of digital system. So when you learn about the flip-flops later on, you will know how the flip-flop is being used as the other circuit of digital logics. So let's continue. So the first type of latches that we are learning today is we are learning about SR latch. So the SR latch, which is um, pronounced as the set reset latch, is the most basic type which can be constructed using no or none gates. So we have an option to what do you call um, design the latch by using no or none gates. So an active high input SR latch is formed with two cross couple no gate, and active low input S bar R bar latch is formed with two cross couple non gate. So if you want to design the active high input SR latch, you need to use the no gate. But if you want to design the active low input S bar R bar latch, you need to use non gate. Okay, the second arrangement is similar for active high and active low, but the differences is you need to notice that it is no gate and it is non gate. That is one. So the second one is the when input R with a feedback input, it will produce output Q. But for active low input S bar R bar latch, input R bar with the feedback from the Q, it will produce output Q bar. So the output has been swapped. You see here, for S input, combined with the Q output, it will produce Q bar. But this time, the S bar output will be combined together with Q bar output and it will produce Q output. Okay, so the arrangement of S and R has been swapped. So this is S bar and this is R bar. Okay. So next we go through the active high SR latch. So the active high SR latch has two inputs, which is S and R, which will let us control the output of Q and Q bar. So this is the logic circuit for active high SR latch. So here, Q and Q bar will give the feedback into the circuit. So Q bar will go to the input of the first NOR gate which is joined by an R. And the Q output will join the input of S. Okay. They are not the only outputs. They also are the inputs. So Q and Q bar will act as two different roles. They are the output and they also are the input for the latch. So to figure out how Q and Q bar change, we have to look at not only the inputs S and R, but also the current values of Q and Q bar R. So if we wanted to get, for example, this output which is Q, we just cannot take a look at the input R. We also need to take a look at the current input Q bar because the output Q bar is being fed into the logic gate no, to produce output Q. So from this circuit, we will get the equations of Q next, which is the next value of Q equals to R plus Q bar current with a full bar because it is no gate. So if it is all gate, there is no bar. But in this situation, it is no gate, so we have a full bar here. So next is Q bar next, which is Q bar equals to S plus Q current. The current value of Q goes towards as an input into no gate, so we have a over bar here. Next, 
Let's take a look at each condition of input S and R inside an active high SR latch for you to know how an active high SR latch works. So the first condition of SR is when we set S equals to 0 and R equals to 0. So what will happen? So in order for us to investigate what will happen if we set the value of S equals to 0 and R equals to 0, we need to substitute the equation, the value of S and R inside the equation that we get in the previous slide. So the first, we need to substitute the value of R equals to 0 inside the equation Q next. So when we substitute the value of 0, so it will become 0 plus Q current bar which is equals to Q current bar and then the value of Q current bar will be cancelled out by using an over bar. So Q current bar will become Q current. And then we substitute the value of S inside the equation of Q next bar. So when we substitute the value of S, it will become 0 plus Q current which is equals to Q current. And then we have an over bar here. So the final answer will become Q current bar. So as you can see here, when we set the value of S equals to 0 and R equals to 0, the next value of Q will equals to the current value of Q. And the next value of Q next bar will become the current value of Q bar. So when we set the SR equals to 0, 0, then Q next equals to Q current. So whatever the value of Q current has, the Q net will keep it. So it means that this is exactly how the values are stored inside the latch. So this is how the latch stored information inside the digital circuit. When we set the value of S equals to 0 and R equals to 0. So now I will show you how does it, what is happening inside the SR latch. When we set the S equals to 0 and R equals to 0. First, we need to set the value of S and R first. S equals to 0, R equals to 0. And then let's say the current value of Q equals to 1 and the current value of Q bar is equals to 0. And then the value of Q will go towards the input of the NOR gate A and the current value of Q bar will go towards the input of NOR gate B. And then when we operate the value of 0 plus 0 equals to 0. And then we perform the NOR operation, we complement the number 0, it will become 1. So the next value of Q is 1. And what about the next value of Q bar? So for the next value of Q bar, 1 plus 0 equals to 1 and then we complement the value of 1 the next value of q bar will become 0 so from here you see that the red number shows the q next and the blue number shows the q current so it means that the next number of q is equals to the current number of q so from this example we can say that if we want to store the data inside the latch, we need to set the value of S and R equals to 0. So this example, I show you Q equals to, zero, Q equals to 1 and Q bar equals to 0. But what about if Q equals to 0, or record the current value of Q equals to 0, and the current value of Q bar is equals to 1. So... Does it store the value when we set S equals to 0 and R equals to 0? Let's take a look. So as usual, we need to set the value of S and R equals to 0. And then this time, Q is equals to 0 and Q bar is equals to 1, which is the current value of Q and Q bar. And then it will go, for example, for, as usual, it will go throughout the, uh, the value of input logic gate A and the output value of what you call the current Q bar will go through the input of no gate B. So when we perform the operation 0 plus 1 equals to 1 and we complement the value of 1 so 
the next output of Q will become 0. And the next, and the 0 plus 0 equals to 0. And then we complement the value of 0. So the next value of Q bar equals to 1. So from this example, we can say that if we have any values of Q current and Q bar current, the what do you call the Q next will keep the value of the current value and Q bar will keep the current value of Q bar when we set S and R equals to 0. Okay. So in this, uh, the first state when S and R equals to 0, I show you the example when we set the first example show you when the current value of Q equals to 1 and the current value of Q bar equals to 0. And it shows that the latch has stored the value. And then in this second example, I show you the current value of Q equals to 0 and the current value of Q bar is equals to 1. And still, the latch is still store the value of the current value of Q and Q bar. Okay, so in conclusion, if you want your latch to store a value, you need to set the S equals to 0 and R equals to 0 inside the active high SR latch. So next, let's take a look at the second condition of SR latch. So this is the second condition of SR latch when we set S equals to 1 and R equals to 0. So what will happen? So since S equals to 1, Q next is 0 regardless of Q current. So in order for us to prove this statement, we need to substitute the value of S inside the Q next bar. So when we substitute the value of S, 1 plus Q current, it will become 1. Because in binary number, we only have two possibilities because we have number of 0 and we have number of 1. So 1 plus 0 equals to 1 and 1 plus 1 equals to 1. So it doesn't matter what is the value of Q current, the output will become 1. And we have an over bar here, so it will become 1 bar. And the final answer will become 0 because 0 is the complement of number 1. And then the next step is this new value of Q bar goes into the top NOR gate along with R equals to 0. So we substitute the value of R which is R equals to 0 inside the Q next equations. And then we also need to substitute the Q current bar by having the Q next bar. 0, this value of 0 will be substituted inside the equation of Q next. So 0 plus 0 with an over bar here, it will become 1. So when S R equals to 1 0, when S equals to R, S equals to 1 and R equals to 0, then Q next bar equals to 0 and Q next equals to 1. So this is how you set the latch to 1. So the S input stands for set. So in active high SR latch, S stands for set, R stands for reset. And if you set the value of S equals to 1 and R equals to 0, it means that you set the latch to 1. So when you say that the latch is set, it means that the output of Q next equals to 1 and the output of Q next bar equals to 0. So let's see inside the SR latch gates. Okay, when you set the value of S equals to 1 and R equals to 0, so let's say the current value of the Q and Q bar both are equals to 0. And then the value of Q bar will go to the no gate B and the current value of Q will go through the no gate A. And then we do the no operation 0 plus 0 equals to 0 and then 0 com we complement the number of 0 we will get the output of 1. 
and when 0 plus 1 equals to 1 and then we complement number of 1 so the next value of q bar will become 0 so when you set the value of r equals to 0 and s equals to 1 your q next will become 1 and q bar will become 0 and this condition is called set okay notice that it can take up to two steps to get delays from the time s become 1 to the time q next becomes 1 but once q next becomes 1 the outputs will stop changing so this is a stable state so for this statement i will show you one example when it will take two steps for the latch to become set when we set the value of s equals to 1 and r equals to 0 so this condition can be happen if the current value of q and q bar when q bar is equals to 1 and q equals to 0 so when the when i'm sorry when the current value of q is equals to 0 and when the current value of q bar is equals to 1 this situation is happening so they need two steps in order to become stable so let's operate the sr latch so as usual the value of 1 which is the current value of q bar will go through the no gate b and the current value of q which is 0 will go throughout the no gate a so we do the no operation 0 plus 1 equals to 1 and then we complement the value of 1 so the next q bar will become i'm sorry the next value of q bar will become 0 and then for the r operation so 0 plus 1 equals to 1 and then we complement the value of 1 so the next value of q is also 0 so in this condition we can say that the current condition is not stable so we need to go to the next stage so the first step is already done so we need to go to the next step which is the second steps so right now we have the q next equals to 0 and q bar next equals to 0 so it will become the current value of q and q bar so the current value of q and q bar for, as usual it will go throughout the no get b and no get a okay and then when we operate the no condition of the 0 plus 0 equals to 0 and then we complement the value of 0 so the q next value will become 1 and 0 plus 1 equals to 1 and then we complement the value of 1 so the q bar next will become 0 so this condition when we achieve to this condition it is called set so when the sr latch achieve this state it is stable because it is set okay so um, in order for you to know what is a stable and what is not stable state you can just see from the q and q bar so if you see the value of q is equals to zero and q bar is also equals to zero and when q is equals to one and q bar is equals to one it is not stable because it doesn't uh, fulfill the condition of q and q bar because q bar is the complement value of q okay so it cannot be the same okay so next we set the value of s equals to 0 and r equals to 1 so what will happen so since r equals to 1 q next is 0 regardless of q current so it, it is similar to the previous example when we need to substitute the value of r inside the q next equations so 1 plus q current bar it will become 1 despite anything value of q current bar so it will become 1 with an over bar here so it will become 1 bar 
and the complement value of 1 will become 0. So then, this new value of Q goes into the bottom NOR gate along with S equals to 0. And then we substitute the value of S inside the Q next bar. And then, the Q current value will, what do we call, we substitute the Q current value with Q next. Because 1 plus anything will become 1 bar and eventually become 0. So the value will eventually become 0. So we can just directly substitute the value of Q next into the Q current here. So 0 plus 0 with an over bar here. So you will get the answer of 1. Okay. So when SR equals to 0, 1, then Q next is equals to 0 and Q bar next is equals to 1. So this is how you reset or clear the latch to 0. So the R input stands for reset. So in the previous example, you see that when we set the S value is equals to 1 and we set the R value into 0, it will become set. So when it is set, the Q next equals to 1 and the Q next bar equals to 0. So when this situation is happened, we call it set. But this time, we are setting the value of S to become 0 and R to become 1. So when we set S equals to 0 and R equals to 1, the value of Q next will become 0. The value of Q next bar will become 1. So when this situation is fulfilled, we call this state S reset. Okay, again, it can take two gate delays before a change in R propagates to the output Q next. So, as I shown you in the previous example, it can also take two gate delays based on the current value of Q and Q bar. Okay, now I will show you one example on how to reset the latch. So, to reset the latch, we need to set the value of S equals to 0 and R equals to 1. When S represents set, R represents reset. Okay. So let's say the current value of Q and Q bar is equal to 0. Both are equal to 0. And then when the value of Q goes through the no gate A, and the, val the current value of Q bar will go through the no gate B. And then, as usual, we perform the no operation we will get the output from no get B is equal to 0 because 1 plus 0 equals to 1 and the complement of 1 will become 0 and 0 plus 0 is equal to 0 and the complement number of 0 will become 1. So when this situation is happening, you see that the Q, the, the next value of Q is equal to 0 and the next value of Q bar is become 1. So it means that the latch has been reset. Okay? So, what about if we set both value of S and R equals to 1? So, what will happen to the latch? So, if we set the both value of S and R equals to 1, both value of Q next and Q next bar will become 0. So, uh, as I've been mentioned to you before, if both value of Q next and Q next bar is equal to 0, it is unstable because it contradicts the definition of Q and Q bar, where Q bar is the complement of Q. Okay, so another problem is what happens is if we then make S0 and R0. So, as you all already know, if you wanted to store the value inside the SR latch, we need to set the value of S equal to 0 and R equal to 0. But what will happen if we set S equals to 0 and R equals to 0, when previously we have reset the S equals to 1 and R equals to 1. So the Q next will become 0 plus 0 with an over bar here. So the Q next will become 0, it will, will become 1. And the Q next bar will also become 1. And then, but this, this new value goes back into the NOR gates. And in the next step, we get 
Q next, 0 plus 1 with a full bar, it is equal to 0. And Q next bar will also become 0. So, if we continuously set S equals to 0 and R equals to 0, the circuit will enter an infinite loop where Q and Q bar cycle between 0 and 1 forever. Okay, for this statement, let's say in uh, in cycle A, in cycle 1, we set the value of S and R equals to 1, 1. And then in the next cycle, we set the value of S and R equals to 0, 0. And then in the further cycle, we also set S equals to 0 and R equals to 0. So when we set, when we are, you know, uh, when we uh, set up those kind of uh, cycle, so the circuit will enter an infinite loop. So be because it will cycle between 0 and 1 forever. So your circuit will not be functional. So this is actually the worst case, but the moral is don't ever set the SR value into 1, 1. So I will show you what will happen to the SR latch when we set the value of S equals to 1 and R equals to 1. Okay, so let's say the current value of Q is equal to 0 and the current value of Q bar is equal to 1. So as usual, 1 plus 1 will become 1 and then the complement value of 1 will become 0. And then 0 plus 1 will become 1. And then the complement value of 1 will become 0. So, it fulfills the condition of this statement. When it says that the both Q next and Q next bar will become 0 if we set the value of S equals to 1 and R equals to 1. Because we are getting the output of Q next equals to 0 and Q next bar equals to 0, which is unstable. The summary of the active high SR latch. So this is the logic uh, circuit of the active high SR latch. So you have seen this in the previous slide. And this is the active high SR latch logic symbol. So for logic symbol, you have a total of two inputs, which are S and R, with S is uh, represent set and R represent reset. And you have two outputs, Q and Q bar. So this is the truth table of active high SR latch. So from the truth table, you can summarize that when S equals to 0 and R equals to 0, the Q and Q bar maintains the previous value. So it represents the storing condition of SR latch. So when S equals to 0 and R equals to 0, the active high SR latch will store information. Okay, so when S equals to 0 and R equals to 1, the latch is in reset mode. So, in active high SR latch, the reset mode is represented by the Q value equals to 0. So, when you see the value of 0 inside the output Q in active high SR latch, so it means that it is in reset mode. So when we set S equals to 1 and R equals to 0, the latch is in set mode. So how to prove that? We observe the output of the active high SR latch. So when we see the value of Q equals to 1, it means that the latch is in set mode. Okay. So when S equals to 1 and R also equals to 1, so both Q and Q bar are 0. So it is invalid because the value of Q and Q bar must complement each other. If, for example, if the value of Q is 0, the Q bar must be 1. If the value of Q is 1, the value of Q bar must be 0. Okay. So next, I will show you the timing diagram for SR latch. Okay. So this is a timing diagram for SR latch, so it is equipped with propagation delay. So I've been mentioning you in the previous uh, chapter, what is the definition of prop propagation delay, which is the delay 
when we exit an input to the digital circuit what is the time the output will respond okay the duration when the output will respond when we exit an input to the digital system so that is the propagation delay so based on this timing diagram first we need to observe the initial condition of the timing diagram so the first condition is s equals to zero and r equals to zero so it means that the latch is in storage mode so there are no changes in the output so the initial output is q equals to zero and q1 equals to one and then the next changes of s and r we see that when s is set to one and r is set to zero so it means that the latch is in set mode so when it is in set mode q will become one and q bar will become zero and then in the next stage we see that s equals to zero and r equals to zero so in this stage we call it storage mode so there are no changes of q and q bar so for the next stage we see that s equals to one and r equals to zero so this state is called set mode so q equals to one and q bar will become zero so next the s is become zero and r is becoming one so it means that the latch is in reset mode okay when it is in reset mode q will become zero and q bar will become one and then you see that the next stage is when s equals to zero and r equals to zero it means that it is in storage mode okay so the value of q and q bar is not changing and then s equals to zero r equals to one it is in reset q equals to zero and q bar equals to one and then the latch is storing information again so no changes in the output and then s equals to zero and r equals to one the latch is in reset again and then uh, s equals to zero and r equals to zero so the latch is in reset mode again i'm sorry the latch is in storage mode again so the value is not changing so next is s is set to be one and r is set to be zero so it means that the latch is in set mode when q is set to be one and q bar will become zero so as we are moving towards the timing diagram we see that the s is set to one and the r is also set to one so when this condition is happening the q will become zero and q bar will become zero both value are becoming zero so it is invalid okay so after that the timing diagram the input of s and r is set to zero so it is what i call the your latch will become error because if you set the value of s and r equals to zero zero after you set your SR latch condition of S equals to 1 and R equals to 1 your latch will enter the infinite loop where it will infinite the value of 1 and 0 1 and 0 towards infinity so your latch will not be working well if you set this value okay inside your latch so you must remember please do not set your latch into s equals to 1 and r equals to 1 okay next i will show you the next type of sr latch which is active low sr latch or it is also known as s bar r bar latch so to get an active low sr latch so we need to use nand gates so this is the s bar r bar latch logic circuit so in this circuit it has some differences compared to the active high sr latch and i've been mentioned to you and, and i have also been explained to you what is the differences okay what are the differences between both circuit so this is the s bar r bar latch logic symbol which it has a total of two inputs which are s bar and r bar so it is active flow okay because it has a bubble on the input and it and it has two outputs which is q and q bar okay so this is the 
choose table of S bar R bar latch. So basically, in active low S R latch, so when S equals to 0 and R equals to 1, so the latch is in set mode. So when S equals to 1 and R equals to 0, the latch is in reset. When S equals to 1 and R equals to 1, Q and Q bar maintains the previous value. So it means that it is in storing data mode. And lastly, when S equals to 0 and R equals to 0, both Q and Q bar are 1, which is invalid. So from this statement, what you can say is that the active low SR latch work inversely compared to the active high SR latch. For example, in active high SR latch, the set mode is activated when S is set to 1 and R is set to 0. But in active low SR latch, the set mode is activated when S is 0 and R is equals to 1. So, in order for you to understand on how active flow SR latch works, it is just the inverse function of the active high SR latch. Okay. So, let's move to the next type of latch, which is the gated SR latch. So, what is actually the gated SR latch? So the gated SR latch is an SR latch with control input, control or enable, to enable or disable as an R inputs. So basically, the gated SR latch only have an additional input, which are control or enable. So usually we are using either two annotation, either C or EN, and we also have S and R, which is set and reset. Okay. And then it has been converted into S bar and R bar. And we have two outputs which are Q and Q bar. Okay, so actually these circuits represent the S bar R bar latch. So the additional NAND gates are simply used to generate the correct inputs for the S bar R bar latch. And the control input acts just like an enable. So the additional input that is used inside the gated SR latch, it is just used to, uh, it's, it's, it's like to enable or disable the operation of the SR latch. So, um, in general, the gated SR latch truth table works similar to the active high SR latch when the enable is equals to 1. But when enable is equals to zero, the latch is not working and there are no changes inside the Q next output. Okay, so this is the gated SR latch logic symbol. So we have a total of three inputs this time. So we have S which is set, EN which is enable or control, R which is reset. And we all, we, as usual, we have two outputs which is Q and Q bar. Now, I will show you an example for gated SR latch. So the example given as draw the output Q for the gated SR latch with Q is initially low. So from the question, we have been given a waveform. So from the question also, we are also given the information of the initial value of Q, which is low. So for gated SR latch, when you see the value of enable is equals to zero, so the output value will not change. So it will become zero when the enable is zero because the initial value of Q is low, which is zero. So next we go to the next stage of the waveform. So we see here enable is equals to one. So what we need to take a look is, we need to take a look at the value of S and R. So as the gated SR latch is uh, acting the same as the active high SR latch. So when S equals to 1 and R equals to 0, the latch is in set mode. So the Q will become 1. And then 
you see here uh, after some times the s will become zero and r is become zero and enable is still one so we need to take a look at the value of s and r so in active high sr latch so it means that when s equals to zero r equals to zero it means the latch is storing the data so the output retains okay next we see that the enable is equals to zero so it doesn't care what is s and r the value will retains and then we see enable equals to one and s equals to zero and r equals to zero so it means that the latch will store the data so the output will still retains you see here when uh, the enable is still equals to one but this time s equals to one and r equals to zero so it means that the latch is in set mode so the value will become one so the output will also retain because previously it is equals to one okay next the enable is become zero so it doesn't matter what is the value of the snr the output will still retains and similar to this segment the enable is become zero so it doesn't matter it will the output will still retains so you see here the next stage is when the enable is equals to one and s equals to zero and r equals to one so it means that the latch is in reset mode so in reset mode it will become zero so the output q will become zero and lastly the enable is become zero so it doesn't matter what is the value of s and r the output value will retains okay therefore from this um, example we can say that in getted as r latch if the enable input is be is zero so the output will retains but if enable input is set to one so we need to take a look at the value of s and r and it will operate similar to the active high sr latch so next i will show you the next type of latch which is the gated d latch so what is actually gated d latch so gated d latch is based on an s bar r bar latch so the additional gates generate the s bar and r bar signals based on inputs so we have some we have two inputs d data and also enable so when enable is equals to zero s bar and r bar are both one so the state q does not change and when enable is equals to one the latch output q will equal the input d and no more messing with one input for set and another input for reset so this is the logic circuit for gated d latch to design the gated d latch we need additional gates so in this logic circuit it is shows that we need an extra NAND gate and also we need NOT gate to design the gated d latch so for gated d latch it has a total of two inputs which are d and also control or enable and we have a total of two outputs which are q and q bar so we see here when we set the enable is equals to zero so the connection of enable will connect to one of the inputs of the NAND gate so when zero multiplied by any number it will become zero and the output from NAND gate will become 1 okay so this gated D latch has no bad input combinations to avoid so any of the four possible assignments of C and D are valid so it means that this gated D latch has solved the problem of the instability of the conventional SR latch where it become unstable when the input of active high sr latch uh, when we assign the value of 1 1 it will become unstable and for active low input sr latch when we assign the value of 0 0 the output will become unstable 
So this type of latch, gated D latch, has solved those problems. So this is the example of the gated D latch uh, waveforms. So first, if we wanted to know what is the output that comes from the gated D latch, we need to observe from the enable pin. Okay. So if enable pin is equals to zero, it means that there are no changes at the output. And if the enable pin is set to 1, it means that the output will follow the input D. So let's take a look. Okay, first, you see here, enable pin is equals to 0. And the initial value of Q is 0. So it will constantly become 0. And after that, the enable pin has set to 1. And it just follow the input D. And then next, the enable pin is equals to 1 and the output can just follow the input D. Okay, so it will become 1. So then, you see that the enable pin has become 0 again. So in this duration, there are no changes in the output. So it means that the next output is equal to the previous output. So it will be constantly become 1. And then, the enable pin has been set to 1 again so it just follow the pattern D similar to this segment it just follow the D input and similar to this segment so the output just follow the D input and until it reach the final stage of enable set to 1 so it will just follow the D input okay and finally you see here the enable has been set to 0 so it means that the output doesn't change so it will constantly become 1. So next I will show you the what I call the last example of the type of latch which is the gated JK latch. So the gated JK latch is another way to improve the gated SR latch. So despite of uh, in addition to the gated D latch so the gated JK latch also designed to solve the problem of conventional uh, SR latch. So the input J and K perform exactly the same as SNR, with the exception of the condition of JK equals to 1 1. So when JK and when when J and K are both high, and when uh, it means that when we set J and K equals to 1 1 the output will toggles so it will switch from 1 to 0 or 0 to 1 or vice versa this is the gated jk latch logic circuit so as you can see from the logic circuit it has a total of four NAND gates so in gated jk latch it has a total of three inputs which are j k and also enables and it has a total of two outputs which are Q and Q bar. So you see in this circuit the output of Q and Q bar both give the feedback to each NAND gate. Okay. So this is the gated JK latch symbol so it has three inputs and two outputs and this is the gated JK latch truth table. Okay. For the gated JK latch you first you need to observe the enable pin so if we set the enable equals to zero there are no changes in the output it doesn't matter what is the value of j and k the output will not change okay so when the enable is set to one it will works exactly like the active high sr latch except the last condition when j is equals to 1 and k is equals to 1. So when this situation is happen, the output will toggle. So the for the, for the rest of the input situation, it is similar to the SR latch active high, where j represent s and k represent r. Okay. So this is the waveform generated for the gated JK latch. So you see here, 
the first part of the segment shows that the enable is set to 0. So the initial value of Q is 0. So there are no changes throughout this duration until the enable is set to 1. Okay, there are no changes of the output. So next segment shows when enable is set to 1, J is set to 0 and K J is set to 1 and K is set to 0. So it means that the latch is in set mode. Okay, so the output will become 1. And then you see here, when enable is set to 1, J is, is set to 0 and K is set to 0, the output retains because it is in data safe mode where there are no changes on the output because J and K both are equals to 0. And we move to the next segment when enable is equals to 1, J is equals to 0 and K is equals to 1. So it means that the latch is in reset mode. So in reset mode, the Q will become 0. And then enable is equals to 1, J and K both equals to 0. So it is in data saving mode. So the output will not changes. Okay, next, enable is equals to 1, J is equals to 0, and K is equals to 1. So it means that it is in the reset mode. So the reset mode makes Q to become 0. So this is the last part of the segment of the getter JK latch waveform. So you see here, the enable is set to 1, J is set to 1, and K is also set to 1. So as you can see from this truth table, the output from the JK latch will toggle. So it will go back and forth, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, and 0. That's all for today's class and thank you.